ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا اما بعد This morning we'd like to continue with our discussion on music musical instruments and some of the misunderstandings pertaining to this subject matter <clears throat> And today we'd like to deal with the issue of al anashid al islamia or islamic anashid and <clears throat> what we will do inshallah is to read some of the fatawa of the ahlul ilm concerning this particular issue inshallah and try to benefit from their statements the first of the ahlul ilm that we would like to quote is sheikh salih ibn fawzan al fawzan we we'll read it to you inshallah سئل فضيلة الشيخ صالح الفوزان هذا السؤال he was questioned or this particular question was presented to him that it has <coughs> become abundant the discussion concerning الأناشيد الإسلامية and there are those who say that it is permissible and there are those who say it is one of the alternatives to the musical tapes what is your opinion a noble sheikh fa ajaba hafizahu allah ta'ala his response the sheikh's response was hadhihi tasmiya ghayr sahiha this name or this entitlement is incorrect وهي تسمية حادثة This is an innovative label فليس هناك ما يسمى بالأناشيد الإسلامية There is no such thing as أناشيد الإسلامية It doesn't exist It never existed in the time of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم at all <coughs> There is no such thing as أناشيد الإسلامية في كتب السلف In the books of the Salaf ومن يعتد بقولهم and those whose statements are to be relied upon من أهل العلم from of the people of knowledge والمعروف <coughs> أن الصوفية أن الصوفية and it is known that the Sufis هم الذين يتخذون الأناشيد دينا لهم they are the ones who take the anashid as their deen or as an aspect of their deen to themselves wa huwa ma yusammunhu bis sama' and they call it a sama' yani listening to these things wa fi waqtina and in our time when the abundance of different islamic groups and parties appeared sara li kulli hizb aw jama'atin anashid hamasiya each Islamic group or party developed for themselves these type of inciting or stirring up type of anashid wa qad yusamunaha bil anashid al islamiyya he said and they might call it anashid al islamiyya hadhi tasmiya la sihata laha this name or this title has no authenticity to it at all He says wa alayhi fala yajuz ittikhad hadhi al-anashid based on this it should not be used <coughs> la yajuz it is not permissible wa tarwijuha or to actually propagate them bayna nas amongst the people wa billahi tawfiq and with Allah is the success 
There was another question posed to the Shaykh. After that we'll read the statement of Shaykh Uthaymeen or Rahimahullah Ta'ala than that of Shaykh Nasr Rahimahullah. <coughs> the Shaykh was questioned about the summer centers that they have where they have skits and they have the anashid. What is your opinion about this? His response was, it is compulsory on those responsible for these centers to prevent and forbid these types of things from taking place, which has no benefit in them. Or, it is harmful to the students. Rather to teach them the Qur'an and the Sunnah and the Hadith and Fiqh and the Arabic language. This shall suffice them and preoccupy them during their times from those other things. Also teaching them beneficial knowledge that they need in this life. For example, handwriting and calligraphy, mathematics, or some other beneficial profession. He says, as for those things that they call recreational, فَهَذِهِ فِي الْوَاقِ لَا يَنْبَغِي These things, it's not becoming for them to have these things. And this to be a part of the program, the barnamage, or baramage. Because it takes from a large part of the time without any benefit. Nay, perhaps it might preoccupy them and cause them to forget the benefit for which they came. <clears throat> he said, and also included in this are the skits that they play and the anashi that are recited. He said, it is simple amusement and play. And it actually develops and instills in the students to follow up those masrahiyat, those what they call them silsilas that you have on the television and all of that, and to listen to music. It actually encourages them to do that. And those things that we find in the media. So the response of the Shaykh yani, is that you should not listen to the Anashi, it's a waste of time. Shaykh Uthaymeen rahimahullah ta'ala <coughs> He was questioned about it He has two responses Actually <coughs> Let me just read it to you What is the regulation or ruling for listening to the Anashid? The ruling or regulation for listening to Anashid Hal yajuzu lida'iyya al-istima'u ila al-Anashid al-Islamiyya? Is it permissible for those dua to call, sorry, to listen to the Anashid al Islamiyah? Everybody know what the Nasheed is, right? Huh? No. Hey. <clears throat> Man, you know, if I could give you an example by reciting it, I'd do it. But it's not permissible. Hmm? It's verbal, yeah, yeah. And it, they, they have actually made it musical. And this is where the problem comes in. It's not just a simple chanting, it's like singing actually. And in addition to that, they have introduced the doof and other things in it. So it's gone from just simple, the old type of poetry that used to be chanted, and it is something else. And that is where the dislike comes in, or the impermissibility of it. Alright? <clears throat> Play it. <clears throat> This question was posed to Sheikh al uthaymeen rahimahullah ta'ala. <clears throat> he said, <clears throat> he said, the Anashid al-Islamiyya, I used to hear it a long time ago. And there was nothing that would, yani, seem, you nafir, something that would run you away. And I heard it finally, and I find that it is musical, melodious, in the same way that people sing, accompanied with music. He says, it is in this way, la ara lil insan in ilayha. I consider, it is my opinion, that no human being should listen to it. <clears throat> he says, as for those things that come just without any intent, it has no musical delight, it has no musical arrangements, for example, the normal chanting that you do when you're reciting poetry, 
He says, listening to that, there is nothing wrong with it. He says, however, even that with the condition that a person doesn't make it his past time, that he listens to it constantly. He says, and there is another condition, that he should not that he doesn't make his heart only benefit from this alone. وَلَا يَتَّعِذُوا إِلَّا بِهَا And that he, that he does not seek any admonition except from this type of expression. لِأَنَّ كَوْنَهُ يَجْعَلُهَا أَعْذَمَ مَوْعِذَةً وَهِيَ مَا جَاءَتْ فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ وَسُنَّةِ الرَّسُولِ اللَّهِ He says, Afwan, <coughs> He says here, I skipped a line, I'm going to read that again. لِأَنَّ كَوْنَهُ يَجْعَلُهَا دَيْدَنًا فَإِنَّهُ يَتْرُكُ مَا هُوَ أَهَمْ He said, because if he makes this, this is past time, he will leave aside that which is more important. Which is more important. And the fact that he does not receive admonition except from it, or benefit from it, إِلَّا بِهَا He is turning away from that which is a greater source of admonition, and it is what is found in the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so if he listens to that sometime and he's talking about the type that is similar to poetry without any musical tones without any melodious type of presentation if he listens to that which is permissible sometimes o annahu kan yaqudu sayarata fil bar or while he is driving his his car out in the open and he wanted to do this, for example, to help him to continue in his travel. فَلَا بَأْسَ بِهِ There's nothing wrong with it. That's the type that is permissible, yani, the type of chanting that is permissible. As for the other ones that we popularly hear, the Shaykh says no. In one of his other, other fatawas, the Shaykh, <coughs> he was questioned, the question says, As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is the Fadilat al-Shaykh Muhammad al-Salih al-Uthaymeen, Hafidhahu Allah Ta'ala. Of course the Shaykh has passed, Rahimahullah. Is it permissible for the men to chant these in Ashi, to sing them? I'm going to use the word, sing them. وَهَلْ يَجُوزُ مَعَ الْإِنْشَادَ الدَّرْبِ الدُّفْ And is it permissible along with this type of recitation to beat the duf? And is it permissible to do this جائز في غير الأعياد والأفراح that it can be done outside of the Eid times and times of happiness and joy the Shaykh response was Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته he says الانشاد الإسلام إنشاء مبتدع says this type of presentation is innovative مما ابتدعه سوفية it was innovated by the Sufis. وَلِهَذَا يَنْبَغِي الْعُدُولُ عَنْهُ إِلَى مَوَاعِدِ الْقُرْآنِ وَالسُنَّةِ Because of this, it is important to turn away from it to the admonitions in the Qur'an and in the Sunnah. اللهم إلا أن يكون في مواطن الحرب فيستعان به على الإقدام والجهاد في سبيل الله تعالى فهذا حسن he says, Oh Allah, Allahumma, accept that it is in the times when there is confrontation, war, and it is being used to help the people to go forth in battle, then this is Hassan. وَإِذَا اجْتَمَعْ مَاهُ الدُّفْ كَانَ أَبْعَدْ عَنِ الصَّوَابِ And if you have the duf, this musical instrument with it, it is even farther away from that which is correct. So according to the Shaykh, this is an innovation that the Sufis introduced into our deen, we should not partake in it. Shaykh Nasr rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned, <coughs> I'm going to read something that he mentions in the last part of his book, Tahrim Alat al tarab the impermissibility of musical instruments. He said, <clears throat> Here there remains with me 
a concise word that I would like to conclude this discourse, this beneficial discourse with, insha'Allah. Insha'Allah ta'ala. And it is about what the people call an ashid al-Islamiyya. Or a diniyya. He says, <clears throat> it is clear, and he's speaking about the other chapters that he dealt with in his book, what it is permissible to chant of poetry and what is not permissible. As it became clear prior to that, the impermissibility of musical instruments, all of them, except the duf during the Eid and during the weddings for the women. We know that no man is supposed to be beating no duf and shaking their heads. Right, we heard Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah said what the Salaf used to call them. Women men. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> he says in this final section, it is not permissible to draw close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except with what he has legislated. How then is it permissible to draw close to him with what he has made haram? He said, because of this, the scholars have made forbidden the Sufi type of singing, the Sufi songs. I don't know if the brothers have ever heard the Sufis chanting and singing. Right? Barakallahu feekum, Allah save you from it. <clears throat> he said, the ulama, harrama ulama al ghina al Sufi. This type of Sufi singing. And their reprimand and rebuke for it was severe on those who say that it is permissible. If you remember this, if the person who is reading this book keeps this in mind, <clears throat> and these strong foundations, it becomes clear to him, it becomes clear to him with all clarity that there is no difference in the regulation between the Sufi songs and the Anashid al They're one and the same. He said, nay, perhaps there is another defect in these particular type of Anashid that you might not find in the, the Sufi ways of singing. And that is these musical, shameless tone, uh, tunes that have been added to them. He says that have played or actually recited according to the Eastern musical laws or the West. And they delight those who listen to it, it causes them to dance, and it takes them out of their limits. He says, فَيَكُونَ الْمَقْسُودِ So the intent normally is the music and the delight that is enjoyed from it. وَلَيْسَ nasheed with that, and not just a nasheed in and of itself. He says this is a new contradiction and opposition and it is resembling the kufar and those <coughs> that are shameless and have no dignity. He says also, and there can come as a result another opposition or another fault and it is Resembling them in their turning away from the Qur'an and leaving it aside. And they therefore come under the general complaint that the Prophet ﷺ had concerning his people. As Allah Ta'ala says, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا When <coughs> the Prophet ﷺ <coughs> complained about his people, he says, oh, and the messenger said, my Lord, Surely my people have deserted this Qur'an. He says, the Shaykh gives a story, he says, and I remember very clearly when I was in Dimashq, before my hijrah to Amman, two years before the hijrah, that some of the Muslim youth, <clears throat> they used to chant these and ashid, it had sound meaning. And their intent was that they were to show opposition to the Sufi songs. Like the Qasair Abu Sayriya, where they mention all types of kufr and things in these uh, standards of poetry. They actually copied this on the tapes. And it wasn't long until 
they included in the chanting the beating of the duf. And they used it initially during the weddings on the foundation that the duf is permissible during the weddings. Then the tapes spread and copies were made. And then it became used. And it was used in the homes. And they started to listen to it day and night. On occasions, and other than those occasions where you can listen to the duf. And this became their comfort and pastime. He says, this is no other reason because of the dominance of desires and ignorance about the tricks of the shaitan. And this turned them away from that which is important and paying attention to the Quran and listening to it. Not to speak about studying it. فَسَارَ عِنْدَهُمْ مَحْجُورًا And it became, as Allah mentioned in the Qur'an, something left aside. Hafiz <coughs> ibn Hajar, Afwan, Al-Hafiz ibn Kathir mentions the tafsir of this verse. <coughs> where the Prophet wasallam mentioned, sorry, where Allah mentions in the Qur'an that the وَقَالَ الرَّسُولِ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخِذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَحْجُورًا and the messenger said, My Lord, surely my people have deserted this Qur'an. Ibn Kathir, he says, Allah mentions, informing about his messenger, and his prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he said, My Lord, surely my people have deserted this Qur'an. He said, this is because the mushrikeen, they never used to listen to the Qur'an. Never used to pay attention to it. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفُرُوا لَا تَسْمَعُوا لِهَذَا الْقُرْآنِ وَلَغَوْ فِيهِ They said, the, those who disbelieve, do not listen to this Qur'an, but, but be inattentive while it is being recited. Says here, <clears throat> so they used to, when the Qur'an is being recited, they would make a lot of confusion and start talking a lot. In other things, so as not to hear it and not to pay attention to it. He said, this is a part of leaving it aside. And leaving off iman and faith in it. Leaving aside believing in it. Leaving aside believing in it is a part of hijranihi, giving it up. Keeping away from reflecting on it and understanding it is a part of leaving it aside. Putting away actions and acting upon it and carrying out the commands and staying away from the prohibitions is a part of giving up the Qur'an. He said going away from it to other than that, preoccupying oneself with poetry or some other statement or singing or some other waste of time or some other speech or any other way that is taken other than it is a part of leaving the Qur'an aside as mentioned in the Qur'an. He says, so we ask Allah the Magnificent, al manan the one who bestows, Al-Qadir, the one who is able to do all things. Ala ma yasha, to whatever he wills. And yukhallisana mimma yushituhu, to free us from that which angers him. And to use us in a way that is pleasing to him. من حفظ كتابه In remembering his book. وفهمه And understanding it. والقيام بمقضبا And acting on what is required in the Quran. آناء الليل وأطراف النهار Throughout the day and night. In a way that is pleasing to him and he loves. وإنه كريم وحاب Surely he is the noble and the one who bestows. This was the last <coughs> and the conclusion of the book that Shaykh Nasr rahimahullah compiled on music, the impermissibility of musical instruments. And all of them agree that these anashid that are being spread in some of the groups is something that you should stay away from. It's not permissible to listen to them. There is a part... <coughs> That Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyah, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he mentioned something that <coughs> actually Ibn Rajab mentions, <coughs> Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he says, <coughs> Allah, inna Allah Ta'ala, amara ibadahu fi kitabihi, 
وعلى لسان رسوله بجميع ما يصلح قلوب عباده ويقربها منه he says Allah the exalted commands his slaves in his books and on the tongues of his messen on the tongue of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with everything that corrects and repairs the heart and bring it closer to Allah and he forbids wanahum amma yunafi dhalik wa yubaduhu and forbids them from everything that is incompatible with that and shows opposition to it he says wa lamma kanat al ruh taqwa bima tasna'uhu min al hikam wal mawidat al hasana he says and when the soul and because the soul is strengthened with what it hears of wisdom and goodly exhortation wa tahya bihi and it is brought to life because of that shar Allah li ibadihi sama'a ma taqwa bihi qulubuhum Allah has legislated for his slaves that which shall strengthen their hearts wa tatagadha wa tazdadu imanan and will nourish it and increase it in faith fa taratan yakunu dhalika farda alayhim ka sama'i al qur'an and sometimes Allah has made it binding on them like listening to the Quran with dhikr wal mawidha and reminders and admonitions yawm al jumu'a fi al khutbah on the day of khutbah on the day of yawm al jumu'a to the khutbah was salah and during the prayer wa ka sama'i al qur'an fi al salawat and like listening to the Quran in the prayers al jahriya those that are recited audibly min al maktubat during the compulsory prayers he says, وَتَارَةً يَكُونُ ذَلِكَ مَنْدُوبًا إِلَيْهِ And sometimes it is only encouraged. غَيْرُ مُفْتَرِدٍ كَمَجَالِسِ الذِّكْرِ الْمَنْدُوبِ إِلَيْهَا Like sitting in the places of remembrance, like the places of ilm and knowledge. He says, فَهَذَا السَّمَاعَ حَادٍ يَحْدُ قَلْبَ الْمُؤْمِنْ إِلَى الْوَسُولِ إِلَى رَبِّهِ He says, this particular type of attentive listening guides the heart of the believer until he reaches his Lord يسوقه ويشوقه إلى قربه it drives him and causes desires until he comes close to his Lord وقد مدح الله المؤمنين بوجود مزيد أحوالهم بهذا السماع and Allah has praised the believers with an increase in their condition if they engage in this type of attentive listening to his text وَذَمَّ مَنْ لَا يَجِدُ مِنْهُ مَا يَجِدُونَهُ And he criticizes those who do not find what the believers find when they listen to the Qur'an. فَقَالَ تَعَالَى إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا He says, only those, Allah says, surely only those are the believers. When Allah is mentions their hearts find a tremor in it. And when his signs are recited, it increases them in faith. <clears throat> Some of the Ahlul Ilm, <clears throat> when speaking <clears throat> about the Quran, Muhammad ibn Wasa, he said, Al-Quran bustan al-arifin. Haythu ma hallu minhu hallu fi nushatin. They say the Qur'an is like an orchard of the people who have understanding. Wherever they come to rest, they come in a place where they can find rest and comfort and enjoyment. Malik ibn Dinar, he says, Ya hamalatul Qur'an, Mada zara' al Qur'an fi qulubikum? He says, Malik ibn Dinar used to say, O oh, people who carry the Qur'an, What has the Qur'an nourished in your hearts? فَإِنَّ الْقُرْآنَ الرَّبِيعُ الْمُؤْمِنِ because the Qur'an is like the spring of the heart of the believer. كَمَا أَنَّ الْغَيْثُ رَبِعُ الْأَرْضِ Like the rain is the spring and the nourishment of the earth. قَالَ الْحَسَنْ حَسَنْ الْبَسْرِ He said, تَفَقَّدُوا الْحَلَاوَ فِي الصَّلَاةِ وَفِي الْقُرْآنِ وَفِي الذِّكْرِ Hasan al-Basri used to say, Seek and consider the loss of the sweetness of the salah and of the Qur'an and in the dhikr. فَإِنْ وَجَدْتُمُوهَا فَمْضُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا If you find this sweetness when you recite the Qur'an and in the Salah continue and have glad tidings. فَإِنْ لَمْ تَجِدُوهَا فَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ الْبَابُ مُغْلَقُ And if you don't find it then know the door is closed to you. 
The door is closed. You have no sweetness when the Quran is being recited. <clears throat> Abu Sa'id, he said, Man ahab Allah, ahab kalam Allah, wa lam yashba' min tilawati. Whoever loves Allah shall love Allah's word, and he will never be satisfied from his recitation. This is the case of the people whose hearts have not been corrupted by listening to the Anashid, but who has the taste and the sweetness of the Qur'an in their lives. These two will never come together. Subhanakallahum, oh no, 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 barakallahu feekum brothers. There's another part to our discussion. <clears throat> if you'll bear with me inshallah is that issue that people have whenever you have a you know a discussion they say but look Akhi, the scholars differ on it I wanted to deal with that a little bit man there's a difference of opinion you know sometimes I really wonder if they know what they're talking about the Shia says look you can marry nine the Prophet Wasallam forbade the companions from having more than four. The Shia says, look man, the Quran says two, three, four. Two plus three plus four. How much that is? It's nine. He said, not only that, the Prophet Wasallam had nine. How y'all gonna go against the Quran? فَانْكِحُوا مَا طَابَ لَكُمْ مِنْ نِسَا مَثْنَى Two, and it says مَثْنَى وَا And it says and ثُلَاثَى Three, and وَرُبَعَ And four Two, three plus four is nine huh? Not only that, look the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم had nine How you gonna deal with him? Well you know the Sunnah explains the Quran and the Prophet wasallam and the brother had ten because in Jahiliya they used to have a grip of sisters. Prophet wasallam said take four and leave the rest of them. This is a specialty for him. Person comes and says look man there's a difference of opinion man I got ten. I mean nine. No, because there's a difference of opinion. Not every difference yani, is worth looking at and not every mujtahidun is musib. Not every mujtahidin, not every mujtahid has achieved and attained that which is correct. Okay? He's not blameworthy because he exerted himself trying to find the truth, but that does not mean that his judgment is correct. Some of the things that we have, we're going to read <clears throat> this narration here from Ibn Umar. Collected by Bukhari and Muslim. He said, Qala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yawm al-ahzab. The day when the different tribes came to wipe out Islam in Medina. And after this had taken place, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to the people, the Sahaba, la yusalli yanna ahadun al-asr illa fi bani Quraidha. None of you pray asr until you accept in bani Quraidha. فَأَدْرَكَ بَعْضُهُمْ الْعَصْرَ فِي الطَّرِيقِ Some of them, whilst undertaking the journey and going, Asr came in during the way. فَقَالَ بَعْضُهُمْ لَا نُسَلِّ حَتَّى نَأْتِيَهُمْ وَقَالَ بَعْضُهُمْ بَلْ نُسَلِّ لَمْ يُرِدْ مِنَّا ذَلِكِ Says, some of them says, look, we're going to pray, not pray until we get there. The Prophet wasallam said, don't pray until you get to where Banu Qurayza is. The other group says, no, this was not what was intended. Just encouragement to go hastily forward. So some of them prayed along the way, and some of them delayed the prayer until they got to Banu Qurayza. They mentioned this to the Prophet wasallam. فَلَمْ يُعَنِّفْ وَاحِدًا مِنْهُمْ He did not reprimand either group. This particular narration which was collected by both Bukhari and Muslim has been misunderstood by some of our Muslim brothers and sisters. They say, look, this is an indication that all of them were correct. All of them. This was not the understanding of the scholars in the past. And not only when he looks at this, he says... <clears throat> 
فيه أنه لا يعنف يعني المجتهد This is an indication that the mujtahid is not to be reprimanded fi ma fa'alahu bi sihadihi according to what he does based on his ijtihad that he's not to be yani reprimanded because he exerted himself but he said that in it is not an indication that he is correct the only thing that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did was left off criticizing them he did not say both of you are correct. That's not found in the text. This is the same position held by Hafidh ibn Hajar al-Rasqalani when he deals with this particular narration here. He says here, ثُمَّ الْإِسْتِدْلَالِ بِهَذِهِ الْقِصَّةِ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ كُلَّ مُجْتَهِدٍ مُصِيبٌ عَلَىٰ الْإِطْلَاقَ لَيْسَ بِوَاضِحٍ وَإِنَّمَا فِهِ تَرْكُ تَعْنِيثِ مَنْ بَذَلَ غُسَعْهُ Says here, then using this particular narration as an evidence that every mujtahid is correct absolutely is not clear not from this narration the only thing that we find in it is that there is no reprimand on him as long as he exerts himself to do what is correct there is no indication that yeah he is right how could this be we have a narration which is collected by al-Bukhari from Amr ibn al-As he said, أنه سمع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم يقول إذا حكم الحاكم فاجتهد ثم أصاب فله أجران If a person judges or exerts himself, a scholar exerts himself and he judges and he gets it right, he has two rewards وإذا حكم فاجتهد ثم أخطأ فله أجر if he exerts himself and he passes a judgment and he gets it wrong, he gets one reward. One reward. Ibn al-Arabi said, this is a clear indication. We're talking about Ibn al-Arabi, the Maliki scholar, not the Sufi. Okay? He says, this is an indication in al fi jihatin wahida. That the truth is in one direction alone. Because the Prophet wasallam clearly said that one of them is making a mistake. Both of them have knowledge. Both of them exerting themselves. But one of them made a mistake. It's an indication that not everybody is right. Not every statement is to be followed, especially if you know where it goes against the text. The Prophet ﷺ in this narration, <coughs> Bukhari mentioned in his book, Kitab al Hiyal, عن أم سلمة عن أم سلمة رضي الله عنها عن النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم قال إنما أنا بشر. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم says I am only a human being. وإنكم تختصمون إلي and you come and you dispute you bring your disputes to me. ولعل بعضكم أن يكون ألحن بحجته من بعض. Says, and perhaps some of you may be more intelligent and eloquent in presenting his evidence than the other brother. He says, لَهُ عَلَى نَحْوِ مَا أَسْمَعَ And so I judge in his favor according to what I hear. The Prophet ﷺ says, فَمَنْ قَضَيْتُ لَهُ مِنْ حَقِّ أَخِيهِ شَيْئًا فَلَا يَخُذْهُ And if I judge in, his, in your favor, with a right that your brother deserves, do not take it. فَإِنَّمَا أَقْتَعُ لَهُ قِطْعَةً مِنَ النَّارِ Because I am only giving you a portion of the flames. This particular narration, <coughs> it is clear that if the Prophet ﷺ can make a mistake in his judgment, in this way, Hafiz ibn Hajar says, this is when judging amongst the people, he says, فِيهِ أَنَّ الْمُجْتَحِدْ قَدْ يُخْتِي That the mujtahid can make a mistake. If the Prophet ﷺ said this, this is a clear evidence that the person doing ijtihad, he has the quality to do it, can make a mistake. فَيُرَدُّوا بِهِ عَلَى مَنْ زَعْمَ أَنَّ كُلَّ مُجْتَحِدٍ مُصِيبٍ And this is evidence to refute those who say every mujtahid is correct. It's not the case. Okay? He says, وَفِيهِ أَنَّ الْمُجْتَهِدِ إِذَا أَخْطَأَ لَا يَلْحَقُهُ إِثْمٌ بَلْ يُؤْجَرُ 
And it is an evidence that the mujtahid, if he makes a mistake, he has no sin. He's trying to do what is right. Alright? <clears throat> Nay, rather he gets reward. We have <clears throat> Ibn Abdul Bar in his book, Jamiu Bayan al Ilmi wa Fadrihi, which collects the virtues of knowledge, <clears throat> the explanation, the meaning of knowledge and its benefits. He mentions something, he says, that Ibn Qasim said, I heard Imam Malik and Laif, both of them saying about the differences amongst the Sahaba. I'm going to read this in Arabic first. قال ابن القاسم سمعت مالكا والليث يقولان في اختلاف أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم ليس كما قال الناس فيه توسعا ليس كذلك إنما هو خطأ وصواب He says I heard Malik and Leif saying concerning the differences amongst the companions of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that it is يعني a spaciousness for the people. Take whatever you want, in other words. He says, no, it ain't like that. It's either wrong and right. Either wrong and right. He says, Mufi Sama Ashab. Ashab said, Imam Malik was asked, Amman about the one akhadha bi hadithin haddathahu thiqatun an ashab rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aturahu min thalika fi sa'atin he said, Imam Malik was asked about a person who received an authentic hadith from a trustworthy person from the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Does he have a choice? Then he can leave it aside and follow some other opinion? <laughs> Imam Ahmad said, uh, sorry, Imam Malik says, La wallahi hatta yusib al haq says, no, but I swear by Allah, no, until he does what is correct. Malhaqu illa wahida. He says, the haq, the truth is nothing but one. Qawlani mukhtalifan yakunani sawabaini jami'an. says, two, with two positions, in opposition, totally different, both of them are the truth. He says, malhaqu wa sawab illa wahid. He said, the truth and that which correct is one. One of them. He says, قَدْ اِخْتَلَفَ أَصْحَابُ الرَّسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فَخَطَّعَ بَعْضُهُمْ بَعْضًا Says the companions of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم differed amongst themselves. And they amongst themselves would say one another was wrong and the other was correct. He says, وَنَذُرَ بَعْضٌ فِي أَقَاوِيلْ بَعْضٍ فَتَعْقَبَهَا and they looked at the positions that one another had and some of them refuted it. He says, وَلَوْ كَانَ قَوْلُهُمْ كُلُّهُ صَوَابًا عِنْدُهُمْ لَمَا فَعَلُوا ذَلِكَ If all of them were correct, they would not have done this. The position then, that some people have, look man, there's a difference of opinion and what this implies is, look, I could do anything I want to do. As long as the sheikh over there says it. No matter what the Quran says, you know the Shaykh says, La ilaha illallah. That is one of the most dangerous positions for the Muslim to have. The truth is found in the Quran, it is found in the authentic Sunnah, and if any position goes against that, it is to be refused. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruk wa atubu ilayk. That's all I really wanted to present on the whole issue of music. Barakallahu feekum.